Let's jump to this first story. Something interesting to kick off this greater conversation. The Daily Mail reports more than half of Democrats and Republicans believe America will cease to exist as a democracy, according to a new poll. They also go on to say the poll found the majority of Republicans, 52 percent, say that it's likely there will be a civil war in the U.S. in their lifetime, while half of independents, 50 percent, and a plurality of Democrats, 46 percent, agree. The poll surveyed 1,541 adults and was conducted from June 10th, uh, uh, from June 10th, the day of the healing, uh, hearing, Jan- Jan- uh, the January 6th hearing, until June 13th. It also found Americans have largely given up on one another. So before the show, you know, we, we, we normally what we would do is we, we'd pull up like the biggest, most relevant story and issues around it. And uh, we, we decided we'd do something inverted. And we would talk with uh, Dennis Prager about what's going on, why people are experiencing this first from your point of view, and then have that actually lead into the news stories as opposed to the other way around. So this is not the first poll we've seen where people think civil war is coming. We also had a poll that came out, or I should say a survey that came out from the SPLC, whether you trust them or not. I'm not a big fan. But it showed that the younger generation is more likely to support political assassination and revolution. My view is once the older generation ages out, as it were, either leaves the political, uh, the political fight altogether or passes on, the next generations are going to be increasingly more prone to violence, which ultimately will lead to civil war or violence. I'm curious as to your thoughts, why, pe- why you think people feel this way or what do you think has happened that's causing it? So let me give you an example. When I, and, and I don't know how this registers with you because uh, I remember when I was a kid and I would hear Uh, Older people say, you know, when I was a kid, and I don't remember how I reacted. Either I reacted, oh, I'm very curious to know what it was like when you were a kid, or, gee, I've heard that before. But I'll take that risk. When I was a kid, there was one truly given in this country. You could say whatever you wanted. And I remember it because I would play, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and we'd play stickball. I have no idea if you even know what stickball is. No, come on, you're not that old. (laughs) What, stickball? Oh, wait, yeah, wait, 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 stickball. They, they called it baseball. No? Uh, sorry? They didn't call it baseball? Well, of course it was baseball, but oh. it was called stickball because you played with a stick. You, we we oh, didn't wow. have a bat in the street. We had a, And it was a rubber ball. What oh, neighborhood okay, in oh. Brooklyn? Uh, Flatbush. Oh, nice. Anyway, where the Brooklyn Dodgers were. So anyway, uh, this is what would happen. Some kid would start screaming at another kid, and the other kid would go, oh, shut up. And then that kid would say, uh, I could say whatever I want. This is America. That was a common uh, rebuttal to anybody who said, shut up. We said that when we were kids. Okay, so great. Even yeah. better. So that's yeah. even better. All right. Uh, that, is, that is no longer said by kids. Uh, you could say whatever you want. This is America has been shattered by the left. And I just want to make something clear because I'll use the term left a fair, fair number of times. I don't believe that left and liberal are the same. I have 32 differences in one column, differences between left and liberal. People could easily look it up. Uh, Dennis Prager, differences between left and liberal. I did a PragerU video on it in five minutes. I'll just give you one example. Uh, liberals believe in racial integration and leftists believe in racial segregation. Agreed. Okay. There's, a, there's an all-black dorm at Columbia where I went. There's an all-black graduation at Columbia where I went. Uh, that is... Uh, there are only two groups who support all black dorms, uh, leftists and the Ku Klux Klan. Mm. Just for the record, it's really important that people understand. Liberals don't support it and conservatives don't support it. So uh, the, the, the ascendance of the left is the descent of, of all these freedoms, and that, that is the root of it. If they allowed us to be heard, we, we would not be confronting the possibility of civil war. We would change so many minds but they, they make it almost impossible for us to be heard. And that, that is the great battle. That is why what, what, the, what Google, YouTube, uh, Twitter, et cetera, what they have done is, is so injurious to the society. It's a revolution. Their, their, their goal, as it was explained to me, is minimize the right just enough not to cause a splash, but to make them ineffective in politics. So you censor enough people so that the conversation will be 60% left and 40% right. And then what happens is you give it time, and over time the right loses the argument because they've, they've got no foot in the, battle, in the battlefield. And I'll give you another interesting thing that people don't reflect on. 
We ache to have them on our shows. We ache to debate them, but they won't debate us and they won't come on our shows and they won't us have us on their shows. I have offered tens of thousands of dollars to any left-wing columnist on the New York Times to debate me anywhere they want. They could choose the moderator. They could choose the audience. Mm-hmm. And serious money, uh, uh, and that's 99% of the New York Times columnists are, are leftists. Maybe right. there are three that are not non-left. Uh, but they would never do it. I ache to debate them. Uh, 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 we, I, would, I would raise $100,000 probably. I could probably raise that to have Ta-Nehisi Coates or Ibram X. Kendi debate Larry Elder. Okay, it would end the career of Tanahisi Coates or Ibram and X. Kendi. And they know that. They would be regarded as the moral and intellectual frauds that they are. Yeah. Larry would wipe the floor with them. Uh, 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 I could give you five black intellectuals who would wipe the floor with them. Absolutely. That's the whole, that's, that's the key to their success is not enabling us to have an audience. But you see, it seems that they target what we would refer to as NPCs. Are you familiar with the term? No. Non-player characters, people who don't take an active role and don't care and just say, tell me what to believe and tell me how to fit in. So you take a look at, I'll give you the example I love to give. We can start with uh, the Trayvon Martin story, which was not true. Hands up, don't shoot. That was not true. Uh, Ahmed Arbery story. That was not true. Russia Gate, Ukraine Gate, Jussie Smollett. Covington. That the president said they were good Nazis, that they were fine Nazis. The launching of Joe Biden's campaign, not mm-hmm. true. And so when they come out and they say, we're the good guys, trust us, don't listen to them. And we come out and we say, please listen to everything they have to say and then have a conversation with us. The people who are interested in saying, I want to know for myself, they'll come and take a look and watch the video and say, oh, okay, Dennis is clearly right on those issues. They'll, the people who don't want to do that say, look, man, I just want to fit in. I'm going to do whatever they tell me. I think what we're seeing now is largely the separation is, I, I described this four years ago. I called it the uninitiated and the politically discerning. People who will look at a story and say, is that true? Let me check. And the people who say, I don't know, it's probably true. Media said it. Those people just blindly follow the narrative of the establishment media. They believe fake news every single time. I should say the overwhelming majority of them just believe whatever the TV says, even though it's proven wrong over and over again. And then you have the other side, which includes traditional liberals, libertarians, moderates, conservatives. Those are all right wing. What I, I facetiously say, what makes you right wing is knowing facts. Reality has a conservative bias. Stephen Colbert, he said that line, I'm sure you're familiar with, reality is a liberal bias, you know, 20 or so years ago. But now the issue is, if someone comes out and says, oh, did you know that Hunter Biden was on the board of Burisma and was receiving $83,000 a month and that Joe Biden intervened with a quid pro quo to withhold U.S. guaranteed aid to the government unless the government did him a favor to stop and uh, to fire this prosecutor? Just so happened the prosecutor was investigating the company where his son worked. If you say that you're right wing, regardless of your politics. So if you know the facts, you're right wing. A guy came over to me at an airport right before the uh, lockdowns. By the way, I, I, I hope you'll all adopt this. I never say before COVID. I say before lockdowns. Mm. Yeah. Co- COVID is not the issue. It was right. the reaction The destruction w- was the lockdowns. Anyway, so about a few months before the lockdowns at Philadelphia Airport, I recall well, a guy comes over to me, and uh, thank God people come over to me at every airport except Boston. <laughs> Interestingly, yeah. I don't have any fans in Boston. But anyway, guy comes over to me, and and I'm a heterosexual guy, so it's not often that I think, well, this guy's really good looking. This guy was really good looking. I'm <laughs> six foot four, not as good looking as this guy. This guy was six foot four, comes over with a minimal accent, minimal, and tells me, oh, I really love your work. And I go, where are you from? He goes, Norway. I said, oh, you watch PragerU in Norway? Oh, yeah, all the time. I go, really? You're a, you're a Norwegian conservative? And he said to me, this was priceless, apropos of what you just said. And he said, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm conservative. I just follow logic. <laughs> and I said, then you're conservative. That's how it goes these days. That, that is me, how it goes. Let me give a, a, a to, to, to reiterate my point. Um, here's a guy who just sees you tell the fact and says, interesting. And you would be in, in the United States. That's conservative. That's right. Yeah. yeah that, that's exactly it. Uh, I, I would like to know what position I hold that is not directed by morality and logic. I'd like to know one 
position that, that I hold. And I would probably drop it. If, if logic and morality do not dictate that position, I hereby announce I will drop it. I'll tell you, we had a, we had a fun time. We had a progressive on the show a couple weeks ago. And it was uh, Seamus Coughlin of Freedom Tunes, who is a, uh, he's a Catholic conservative, uh, pro-life. There's me, which uh, I guess uh, disaffected liberal, post-liberal, whatever they call it, and um, you know moderately pro-choice. And then this progressive who was pro-abortion up to the point of birth or maybe beyond. And it was funny because Seamus backed off. He was just like, he, he let me, you know, and this guy had this discussion. And then eventually I said to him, I was like, this is the crazy thing. You know, I asked him, do you believe abortion should be uh, uh, the woman's choice up to the point of birth or should be uh, allowed legal? And he said, woman's choice. And I was like, the woman is about to give birth to a baby at nine months gestation and the, the baby can be terminated, killed, ripped out. And he goes, woman's choice. And I'm like, okay, well, I come from a traditional liberal background where we're like, you know, maybe after the fetus is viable, you just save it. You don't have to kill it, right? And then I was like, but isn't it strange that I am a pro-choice liberal and you're calling me right wing and you're arguing for abortion to the point of birth? How is that the liberal position? How is, how is that we're having this argument and the actual conservative over here is keeping his mouth shut? It's just the whole, as you mentioned, with the left and liberal being different. Yeah, you got to be careful with labels, relying too much on labels and what they mean to you because they might mean something different to someone else. But it's the facts and beliefs that are really important. Well, that's why it's important to define, as I did. I, 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 as I said, I have an article with 32 distinctions. And, and the, the, the race one is one of the biggest. We believe in integrate. We believe, we do believe liberals. I was raised, I'm a Jew from New York, by definition, a liberal. And I was raised that race blind is the moral ideal. You don't see a person's race. You see their character. You see their personality. You see their brains. You see everything. And, and so I, I, today, race is determinative, which is mind-boggling because I ask leftists one question. If you know a person is black, tell me one other thing you know about them and they can't name a thing. Do you know whether they're kind or despicable? Do you know whether they're honest or crooked? Do you know whether they are interesting or boring? Do you know whether they are uh, uh, liberal or conservative? You know nothing when you know someone's skin color. You can nothing. tell more about a person by their shoes than you can by their race. That's, that's perfectly said. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.